bio says he's an entrepreneur, a mortgage industry disruptor, and an organized dreamer. The entrepreneurial bug hit Dan in his mid-20s when he started his first business. Although the company wasn't scalable, it allowed him to buy his first home, showing him home ownership as the greatest wealth creator. In his early 30s, he and his co-founders started Lower to disrupt the mortgage industry and help others build wealth through home ownership. Lower's multi-channel fintech platform offers a streamlined digital approach, and his other company, Homeside Financial, and its 18 additional regional lending firms focus on the in-person, local experiences where they have offices around the country. Under Dan's leadership, the company raised the largest Series A investment in Ohio history in 2021. <laughs> Additionally, the lower team has grown from five employees in Columbus to more than 1,500 across the country. Dan's extensive background in finance also includes executive roles at Wells Fargo and American Bank. He's also founder of a Quick Insured, which is a digital insurance company, one of the fastest growing independent insurance agencies in the country. Dan's involved in the Young Presidents Organization, the New Albany Foundation, Junior Achievement, and Nationwide Children's Hospitals Healthy Homes. So I asked some people for a little nugget about Dan, as I like to do. And it was hard to get anything that I was able to share publicly with you all. Um, what I heard is that he's not fond of public speaking. Um, he, he proclaims to be a little uh, shy about that. But then he always knocks it out of the park every single time. So fellow Rotarians, let's watch Dan Schneider knock it out of the park again. <laughs> Well, thanks for having me. Uh, that's a heck of an intro, and uh, I don't know what there else is, there else is to say about that. But um, so, uh, when I was uh, asked uh, to talk, I, had, I started researching on the Rotary Club and Rotarians and some of the mindset um, of giving back and challenging yourself in business. And if you walked in our office, we're up in New Albany, our headquarters. If you walked in my office, on the wall, I have a quote. It's my fa one of my favorite quotes. And it's, it says that our chief want in life is to have someone make us do what we can. I think it's like Ralph Waldo Emerson. It's probably been you know, redone by a lot of other people. But to me, uh, it's the mindset that allows me to kind of reach and take risk in business. You know, some, if you're fortunate enough to have a leader or a manager um, that's challenging you every day to be who you can be and no more, then that's a great thing, but many of us don't, especially if you're at the top, especially if you're uh, your, your own business owner. Uh, sometimes it can, get, it can get challenging just to kind of wake up in the morning and, and push the limits. I say that because uh, it's a good kind of intro into the quick kind of journey of Lower.com that I'll go through today, and then I'll be happy to answer any questions after the fact. Um, like uh, it was said, I, I'm not a keynote speaker traveling sort of orator. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, and you never heard of me until we named the, the stadium Lower.com Field or raised our $100 million Series A. And yet, though, we were a fast-growing company. We were winning Best Places to Work awards. We were giving back to the community. Um, so I'll just kind of give you guys a little bit of the, the story. Um, so in 2014, it really began. So we're, to some extent, like a you know, an eight-year overnight success. Uh, we, we, uh, my co-founders and I really had the mission of trying to democratize home ownership to increase wealth across the country. So a consumer didn't have to go necessarily to their, the, the big bank and be intimidated in order to get a pre-approval or just talk to somebody about how to buy a home. Or if you had a home and you wanted to figure out how to take equity out of that home to maybe pay off uh, credit card debt or something like that that can be scary to talk to a banker about. Our aim was to really create a best-in-class platform uh, that attracted the best realtors, loan officers, builders across the whole country. And so we started, and the company is called Homeside. And we started Homeside uh, in uh, a, a small office outside of Easton here in Columbus and um, a small office out of Columbia, Maryland. 
And we grew from 10 people to 450 people in the matter of a few years. Uh, we, had, we became a top 50 lender by the time it was 2017. And you know, we, we really started to, to make a name for ourselves. Uh, none of you had heard of us, but within the industry at least. But in 2018, we, we hit, I would call like a, a plateau to some extent. If you've ever been stuck, whether it's trying to help out in your community and the organization isn't really moving or what you want to have happen isn't happening as fast enough, or if you're in a business, you, you don't, might not even be the owner of the business, but you're wondering like what in the world's going on? Why isn't this business growing fast enough? These leaders don't know what they're doing. Well, in 2018, that's where I was personally. I was really stuck. If, if it was the closest uh, that I'd ever gotten to like any sort of depression. I'm a, like a forever optimist. Uh, but talking with my co-founders and I, we, we really didn't have a path forward to continue to grow the business. We were just kind of maintaining. Um, many of our probably employees don't even realize what, what was going on behind the scenes because we put on a good front like you would. And so we were... Here in 2018, I'm thinking, like, what, what, you know, what in the world do we do? And you do what any time you, I, I find that at least you have challenge, the first instinct is to blame everyone else. <laughs> Point fingers. <laughs> no matter how strong you are. You blame the market. You try to justify your competition has something better than you do. You know, your competition has more money than you do. You blame your employees. I, you blame your partners. You do all of that stuff. Um, until you wake up one morning and you're like, well, maybe it is me. And friends of mine, uh, through some of my like, uh, organizations I'm involved with, had suggested get a leadership coach. And I have a leadership coach. And I asked him. So I'm like, I do have that. And he's not doing anything either. I'm paying this guy money. <laughs> and, um, and so talking with, uh, talking with him, he had said to me, like, look, this isn't about business, this is about like vision. And so you need to start writing. If you ever want to get like unstuck, you've got to like pull out a pen and paper and write, which seems really, really um, too emotional for someone like me to do. I'm not a big fan of writing. Uh, so, but at, you know, I had nothing else to lose, so I start writing it out. Like why, why, what's the point of this? Like why grow, why, you know, where's the market going? Why does it make sense? And, um, you know, the, the one thing that resonated was if you really want to make an impact, like going back to the roots, if you really want to make an impact in anything, you have to be big. You have to be large to be heard. And, and so I sketched out kind of a game plan that was to really build a digital lender, build the next generation on top of Homeside, and in order to really go and get venture capital or additional funding to take us to the next level. And this is back in 2018, heading into 19. And so we did. And I went to my team and I said, let's, let's do this. Everyone was kind of on board. I say kind of because they weren't all on board. <laughs> like a few of them were on board. <laughs> the rest thought I was absolutely insane. But you know what? It was worth a shot. And so we launched lower in 2019. It was, a, it was a really weird dynamic. We, have, we had Lower that was like in its infancy. We had Homeside that was still kind of maintaining and growing. But there was this level of energy now to reposition some of the focus. And one thing led to another, and we continued to double our growth and bolted on other technology, built technology, really to diversify our mission and vision of democratizing home ownership. Some folks want to deal with a local realtor and they can work with Homeside or other brands. Some want to do their loan application from their home or driving to work in the morning. They can do it on our app or online with lower.com. And who are we to judge? You know, we're, our whole goal is to uh, provide accessibility to people that want to buy a home one day. And so then we went a step further and said, well, the barriers to entry of home ownership are really high. So let's build out a depository savings account. Let's put some coaching in there. Let's put some goal planning in there. And 
we now are one of the largest home, uh, first time home buyer lenders in the country. You know, the current state of uh, the environment uh, is not, not great. Rates are rising rapidly. Home inventory across the entire country is an all time low. And yet though, the demand for homes is at an all time high. And so where do we play in that space alongside our mission? And these are how, how, kind of how we're solving the problem. So from our beginning in 2014, now if you fast forward, um, rode through the pandemic, and then we were met with really an interesting opportunity last year with um, the uh, Columbus Crew Stadium and, the, the, like, and our race. And it all, it's like anything in life, everything just happens like right now at once sometimes. And so we were, we were in this place where, like last summer, we're talking to Silicon Valley folks about raising $100 million. We're talking to, we're somehow in the running for this Columbus Crew naming rights, which to me, I, I, I thought we, I would give us like a 1% chance, just because we're not the biggest name in Columbus. But things ended up sorting itself out. I think everything does happen for a reason. And, um, and here we are today. And here I am in front of you guys and you know, lower uh, today we, we sit with you know, our direct consumer or lower.com. We have a retail, distributed retail uh, with Homeside and a number of other brands underneath and we're growing that rapidly, both through organic and through acquisition. And then we have this uh, mortgage as a service, we'll call it, where other tech companies, uh, SoFi, Open Door, and a whole host of others want to also offer mortgages to their customers and we're able to plug into those platforms and then offer them through a digital way uh, that way as well. So, you know, we'll, um, uh, so that's where we are and uh, we've got a long, long, long way to go. And, um, you know, we have, outside of that quote, all through the, our, our whole company, um, uh, we have the two words, onward and upward. And my, uh, my grandmother always would end every conversation with that. Always the forever optimist. She lived to 95, and she thought that, you know, she was, at 95 she's planning her 96th birthday. And uh, I'll, that's how I'll end it today. I mean, if you guys are ever at a crew game or ever need of a home loan, this is not a sales pitch. It's just that, um, you know, I would highly encourage, whether you use us or otherwise, to encourage everyone for that home ownership dream because it is the unlocker of wealth. Uh, so thanks for having me today. I'll answer any question you guys have, and onward and upward. Were you able, in your business plan, where you started off to anticipate what the market would be for your, for your products? Uh, and if not, how, how surprised were you when you found out? In the current environment? Well, no one goes to, like, no one goes... When you're in seventh grade and you figure out like what you want to do for a living, you never say mortgage business, <laughs> ever. Um, like it, I, my family's not in this business. My dad's an engineer. My mom's a lawyer. I thought I was going to go to law school, um, and I took a a right turn, ended up in the mortgage business, and I got in the mortgage business. <laughs> this is no joke. Like two weeks before this company named Lehman Brothers uh, crashed, went out of business. I never even heard of them before. Um, and, and so I got in the business right at the worst time you could ever probably get in, or to some extent the best time you could get in. I mean, I, you know, the winners will win, and it's a lot easier when everyone's like running for the exits. Uh, so it's hard to predict a market, you know. Like I, I look at the, uh, the, the, the housing economy and the age where we have the, where the millennial home buyers will be the largest home buying population in history. And, you know, well, you know, th this year will be rocky for a lot of companies, but I'm, I, you know, we're bullish long term, and that's kind of how we keep our, you know, eye on the target. Um, two questions. One's an observation. Do you have to have the first name Dan to start a digital mortgage company? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. And secondly, how are you different from Rocket Mortgage? How, you know, I'm familiar with Rocket. Just ex explain how you're, how you differ. What is the difference between lower.com and, and Rocket? Yeah, they, I mean, they spend a lot of money on commercials, that's for sure. Um, 
You know, I think that, on, okay, so on one hand, I think they were really a, you know, when Rocket went public, they were really a good thing for our business. It finally gave Wall Street the opportunity to see the pros and cons and uh, more pros than cons of, of the mortgage industry. Uh, they've paved the way on technology. They've paved the way on a lot of things. I have a lot of respect. On the other hand, y you know, they, they're, they're, lar they're large. They're like a Wells Fargo. So we're, we're able to, even though they move quickly for a company of their size, we're able to move a little bit quicker. So how do we differentiate? Well, we, they deploy largely just a direct consumer and they have a wholesale channel um, on their lending side where we, we deploy more, we call it channels to acquire customers. So we have our direct consumer that would compete with their rocket. But then we have uh, retail brands that are W2 employees, like I say branches, but with the pandemic, it's been a bit different. But remote groups across the country uh, that are sending in consumers to our platform. And then we have our mortgage service where we're partnering with um, big Fortune 500 companies to kind of work with their customers. You know, it's, um, you know, we have, you know, different types of technology. I mean, I think that one of the detriments of building the, like, you're the leader in the first digital mortgage is you, they, they spent so much money to create that where we were able to kind of use the, you know, we built it 10 years later and for a fraction of the price. So, but we want to beat them. <laughs> <laughs> we work hard every day to beat them. You mentioned being a, um, a well-renowned employer. So how do you, I know you hire a lot of entry-level people, which is great, give them the, you know, the chance to start their career. How do you make it a great environment? What are they looking for? Well, I mean, I think they're looking for stability, which is um, stability, career path, you know, a company that cares. You know, we have, um, you know, as a, as a company, it's, it, especially as a growth company, I mean, it's, we're, you know, we're not growing 0.25 a year. You know, it's, we're, we're growing 100% a year. And so then there is, the, the risk is you can grow too fast. And how do you communicate out? How do you train your leadership? You know, how do you, like, you know, how do you disseminate all the communication and listen and hear from everybody? And, uh, and so it's a, it is definitely a work in progress. I mean, we, we try to, um, I try to talk as much as I possibly can and just try to be real with everybody, uh, admit to the mistakes we've made and, and the wins and not just like sugarcoat everything. You know, for the last two years, we had this massive demand for like rate term refinances. So everyone wanted to reduce their rate, everybody. If you had a 5%, you get two and a half. Well, the, the challenge with that is it requires tons of staff. And I could say that one of the mistakes we made was probably not, we've always had a high bar to work at, at lower or home side. And we, we probably, this isn't a detriment to any of our, our current team, but we've had to, we've had to part ways uh, with underperformers after that business kind of went away, if that makes sense. So look, you know, you, you get the, we, we, we try so hard to, to just be real and have an authentic culture and have fun in games, but I think that, you know, really invest in our people, the training, the career paths, and the stability. I mean, if people are all in on our mission, you know, we're all in on them. What, what role do defaults, give me a little primer on what defaults do in your system or how they impact your business? Uh, well, one of the, one of the benefits of the, cr of the financial crisis is, th was the, I guess the benefits now has been the, the level of credit, the, the high level of credit to actually obtain a, a home loan is like off the charts. So like we have, we service 90% of our loans. So you would, like we're the servicer. And I think our, I mean our default rate's like less than 2%, which, you know, so we, we try to manage it very well, but you man, like, we don't, we're kind of like straight down the fairway lender, if you will. I mean, it's like 752 credit score, you know, high six figure incomes. And that's, that's, that's the reality of the home ownership landscape right now. I mean, that's, 
Um, so it, there's not enough supply. We need builders to build. That was my question. You have builders that aren't able to finish homes right now, and you have people that are buying them that have a rate lock that is about to expire. They may not qualify for that higher rate just because their payment's going up. How are you <coughs> handling this? Well, we, we, we yeah, it's a great question. So, I mean, we, it, it just requires more communication to the customer. I mean, it's, it shouldn't be a surprise. It should, okay, if you, if you locked in a year ago, you're still building your home, like, and they can't absorb that 1% payment increase. Um, I mean, which maybe is 200, 200 to $300 a month. There's probably a problem in the, in the beginning. Because like the average, you know, the average, um, you know, uh, our average loan size, I can't speak for others, is around 300,000. And so, and most of, the, most of the customers are like the elite because the builders and the realtors have their kind of pick of who they want to buy the homes, which is another whole problem in itself. But um, yeah, we, look, it takes a lot of communication and, and what we, we struggle with as, as, a, as a lender is how do you deliver incredible service, be a five-star service, within the reality of not wanting to do bad loans? And so, we, you know, we aim on the side of caution. Could you speak a little bit more about the work you're doing with Nationwide Children's Hospital around housing? Yeah, uh, so they have, so Nationwide has a, a division uh, called Healthy Homes. It was really formed to help clean up the area and really reinvest in the area in which they built their uh, new hospital. And, you know, we, we got in touch with them and their team um, you know, we do a, a lot of work for, uh, giving back monetarily, but also giving back in terms of like the human labor. We have a young workforce here locally that doesn't want to just write checks. And a lot of times they don't have money to write checks for. But they have, you know, there's a lot of strong people and care, you know, kind people that will go clean up the streets and help out. So we partner with them in a number of ways, but it's, um, um, yeah, it's been great. And they were our first, we do like a, at the Columbus Crew, we do a, a you know, charity kind of partnerships. And so we did it with Healthy Homes last year for like donating it for every goal scored and, and that type of thing. But yeah, it's, it's a great thing that they're doing. There's been uh, in history uh, information about McDonald's not really being a hamburger company, but being a real estate company because of how much real estate they own. Have you ever discussed, everything you're talking about right now has been retail. Have you ever spent any thought towards going towards the corporate market? A lot of thought. It's, it's, sometimes it's like, I, um, I asked, a, 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 I was in a, like listening to a speaker the other day and I asked them like, how do you balance focus and diversification? Because, I get new things thrown at us all the time. Like, uh, why don't you do commercial real estate? We could do a partnership here. Why don't you buy your building? Why don't you buy all of your locations? Why don't you? And you haven't? No, we, we, we know we don't. We, we, no. We try to stay very light on, on, the, on assets, and we try to stay away from like, our core competencies as much as humanly possible. Um, just, just because we've got a you know, our core product being like home lending, housing, real estate is hard enough. Uh, we, we, we do operate uh, our own real estate company that really, we have a, a whole partnerships division, so we have our hands full. If anything, we probably would get into some cryptocurrency Web3 type of offering, which is a whole nother day. <laughs> okay, sorry. Besides the money raised for growth, how's your venture capital partnership going and what do they bring to your particular company, Dan, in addition to the capital? Yeah, that's a great question. We have, so when we, we were, I was interested in doing this, like going out and raising from venture capital because they've got a longer term view on their return than maybe a private equity or in, you know, independent investor of some kind. Plus, 
access to capital, more capital, plus access to connections. I mean, there, Excel is the one that invested in us. Excel is, if you, if you Googled top VC firms, they're number one to five out of thousands. Um, they, you know, they've got, you know, lots of uh, tech companies that you have heard of. Um, we're probably the, the uh, you know, we were a good fit because we're, they tend in, they have a, a, a history of investing in bootstrap firms, meaning that you haven't ever raised money. And so that was good for me because we're, we're a sizable company. We have, uh, to some extent, higher revenue and EBITDA than a lot of publicly traded companies. That said, we are definitely not, we need to like, we need to like professionalize more. Um, and they've been great. I mean, they, they bring a, a ton of perspective, like a, a lot of, of uh, we'll call it professional feedback. And uh, my friends joke, like, oh, you got a boss now. And that's, that's definitely not the case. Um, you know, they, they only bought in for a really small percentage, but they, you know, the, I'll give you an example, like on our mortgages service, where you could think like, uh, not that we're pursuing this, but Airbnb, you know, you could think that logically all of their hosts on their platform could just click a button and claim an Airbnb invental, you know, investment property mortgage product. You know, we could do that. So we have SoFi at Open Door, and they're, they're going great. Um, I had said on a call, I'm like, gosh, Robinhood would be really cool, which is like a stock trading app. They're like, you don't know the CEO? I'm like, nope. Uh, oh, okay, well, let me just text him and get you on a group chat. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'm like, that's just, you know, being headquartered in, in Columbus, Ohio has, the benefits are the talent, Ohio State, the community, the cost of living, the, the prosperous bus like business community, it, but it doesn't, lend itself to the Silicon Valley connections. And so now we're kind of on that map and it's a, it's a, a very strategic help for us. Yeah, you have time for one more. Oh, okay, right. Approximately how many people do you hire a year and uh, what kind of jobs uh, do they tend to be? So we, we hire... Locally, uh, yeah, so locally. So we, have, we sit around like 1,500 employees in the in the company. Um, locally, we have uh, like probably half that, half of the total. Um, so who do we hire? We hire in, we have like our main positions in, in we have sales positions, operations positions, um, that tend to be recent college grads or a few years out of college. And then a lot of specialization. So whether that's through marketing, software development, uh, data and analytics, um, product, you know, the, a, a lot of the, the specializations are where we're not, you know, bringing them in to train them, we're hiring the expert to come in and do the work. Um, but, you know, we're more, more and more we're, we're hiring in, like, because right now is a great time, because a lot of the growth tech stocks have been killed, and we're, we're finding it really opportunistic to hire in software developers that we normally couldn't have hired. Um, so that's been great for us. All right, good. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it.